Here is the Tournament of Champions step ladder. Fifth seeded John Maldonado goes for his first career major, second major telecast against Hall of Famer Tommy Jones. The winner takes on future Hall of Famer Sean Rash. Don Bear, Great Britain. Today goes to the Triple Crown. And all point to the top seed, Chris Prater, who won this event in 2020. Let's meet the bowlers. Bowling out of Copperfield Bowl in Houston, Texas. Winner of two PBA titles in 2021, Sean Maldonado. Well, what a breakout year it was for Sean in 2021. The two-hander used to use his thumb, and now he doesn't. And boy, did it pay off big time. He visited the winner's circle for the first time in his career, winning the Chameleon Championship, and then he followed that up with a win in Lubbock, Texas. And here he is. Kia Tournament of Champions show. Step ladder bowling. First match underway from Fairlawn outside Akron. Ten pins, some help. Down it goes. Good start for Maldo. He rolls out of Golden Lanes in Simpsonville, South Carolina. PBA Hall of Famer and 2007 Tournament of Champions winner. Tommy Jones. Well, like we just heard, Tommy looking for his second Tournament of Champions victory, won it in 2007. No dog in me, let's go! That's right, let's go, Tommy. Runner up to EJ Tackett in 2017. Right. He loves this event. Today marks his fifth televised finals at the Tournament of Champions. Wow. Five times on TV for TJ in this great event. 20 career titles, tied for 13th most in PBA Tour history. What a career. Calls himself the old man of the field. Let's see if he can get it done. That's a high shot. And the six pin, a nudge. Mm. Not enough to topple it. Not enough weight behind that pin rolling over into the six. And Tommy do it immediately. Mark in front of this packed house. As Randy talked about, top of the broadcast. Place has jammed his arsenal today. I've been coming to Riviera in the Tournament of Champions since 1986. I'm not sure I've ever seen this many people. Wow. Maybe way back in, in the 80s, but I can't remember yesterday, let alone 30 years ago. <laughs> That's quite a weekend. Left lane for Tommy. That looked better. Trip 10 pin. Hall of Fame weekend. Wes Malott among many inducted into the PBA Hall of Fame last night. Well, that style of Tommy Jones, you see the bent elbow and wrist, and that's how he creates the power. But you can also see the athleticism in that move. He still has great legs, and he gets his legs underneath him and uses them beautifully. Two-hander, Maldonado, looking good in that one-three pocket. He told us yesterday, trying to finally get those first career wins. It meant so much to him last year. Now he's trying to keep the roll going in 2022. A little hop he has there at the foul line. It's kind of reminds me a little bit of DJ Archer. and He does it the same way each time. Watch, uh, he's putting his fingers in. There's no thumb hole anymore. And that was the biggest change he made. He said it took him a little while to, to get used to it, but he says his ball roll is so much better now. Turn his career around, really, right? Yeah. I mean, amazing. Left yeah. lane looks great. All right, what a start here for Sean Maldonado out of Texas. Understated, soft-spoken, but a great guy to be around. He really is a nice guy, and um, it, it was, you know, it was one of those uh, feel-good moments last year when he won for the first time. His buddy Tom Doherty, you know, just absolutely ran him over in Tampa <laughs> during the World Series. And, right. and Tom was right there with every shot that Maldo threw. And I know how excited Tommy was for him as well. What did Sean say? I got me one. Finally got me one. Back 
back to Tommy Jones. Well, let's take a look at the old pattern, Dave. It's the 40-foot Don Johnson. And the players are going to go straight, as you can see, with urethane right around there. But as the pattern breaks down, the players will migrate in and look for later in the day for the players to get inside and throw to that same spot. Tommy Jones did take his first of two re-racks in this match early, but didn't like the way the pins were set. You see on the scoreboard there a moment ago, right under his name, two re-racks allowed per match. Left lane for TJ. All right. All right. Got some big numbers going here early. Both players are using the same bowling ball. They're going with the purple hammer. That helps them to play that much straighter line early. And it looks like there's a little bit more friction on that left lane. On this Don Johnson pattern, you cannot get it outside of, let's say, the sixth board. So that board just inside first arrow. And there you can see the arsenal. Really good shot, 10-pin stance for TJ. They got it in a little bit, as you can see, the red line there. And the good news is he hit the pocket, which means he has a little bit of hold, but he left the flat 10. That's the bad news. Watch this, six-pin, second to your right, and it doesn't do its job. Single pin, spare conversion, cross lane for Tommy. Couldn't put into words yesterday, alluded to that in the interview with Kimberly before the match, about what it would mean to win in this building. Venerable, historic bowling center that's seen so much incredible greatness come through its doors. As a history buff of the game, he knows what it would mean TOC was held here between 1965 and 1994. Returns in 2022 after being in Jupiter, Florida last year. And Tommy Jones looks good in that left lane. Sean Maldonado steps up. And yes, we have a Pabst six-pack alert as he goes for the front six. He strikes here. He wins $1,500 sponsored by Pabst Blue Ribbon of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Please remember to drink responsibly. Maldo goes for it. Maldo doesn't get it. The 10-pin stands. So $500 added to the jackpot, which is now up to 2000 which will keep building until someone cashes in with six in a row. No chance to crack open the six-pack today, RP. Dang. At least that time. Well, I mean, at this game, right. well, actually, no, there's, there's still plenty of room for Jones. Malda can strike out and throw one, two, three, four, five. He can strike out with the last six. So, I mean, yeah, I wouldn't give up on that. <laughs> I meant at that particular moment. Yeah, yeah. But yes, absolutely. More chances. Meanwhile, great match here. Ah. Seventh frame, didn't like it, but hey, it works out just fine. Yeah, and this is why right here. And that ball just kind of laid there. <laughs> it's the kind of look you get after you're done eating gas station sushi. Tiny piece of tape. Don't ever eat gas station sushi. Look, I mean, sometimes in a Word pinch. Word of advice. Sometimes in a pinch, you just got to, you got to do what you got to do. Great look there from our crew. Hmm. Typically, bowlers put their fingers in first, thumb in last. Seven frame for a double for Jones. Big hit. Big hit. 
it. He's going to tape up again. Look at that beautiful release by the 43-year-old. I mean, who can forget what he did at the Hall of Fame Classic after he just got inducted? As we take a look at some of I mean, look how strong. Simonson just missing out. What are the names? Troop, Stewie, Dick Allen led round one. New Hall of Famer there, Wes Malat, top yep. 12. It's great. Matt Ogle, Buttriff. Good to see Oscu Palerma back. All right, a little light on that lane, but just to finish my oh. thought, Tommy gets inducted into the Hall of Fame in 2020, and about 16 hours later, he bowls 300 in the title match to win. Unbelievable. Got that spare, takes care of the two pin. That was certainly a huge career highlight for Tommy Jones. Hall of Fame inductee one night, PBA Tour champion the next day with a 300 game. Sean Maldonado in this match, in this event, looks for the double in the eighth frame. Up by 11, trying to expand his advantage to 21 pins. Oh, no. He just didn't like it again. All right, two pin. Could have been worse. Uh, could have been a lot worse. The eight and the 10 could have been standing with it. He's, his last couple of shots have been very suspect. He knew he got it wide, and you just can't do it. Or it, maybe it was, I'm checking on location, maybe it was just a little fast. Speed was good, just missed right. Oh, that's not a good one out there. Maldonado has to finish on that right lane. Always seems like there's a pesky lane, right? Every time. You want Significant you, difference, left, right lane. Even though the lanes are both oiled exactly the same. Look out oh. for 710. Oh, what a break for Sean Maldonado. <laughs> Eventually, the seven pin falls. Man, was that close. Well, that could have potentially been the end for Sean. And watch this seven pin. It's like uh, teetering, uh, okay. teetering. Okay. Uh, I, go, I go nine, nine now. <laughs> A much easier spare for the ten pin. The oh, no, he missed it. He Not how you took missed of that. it. After avoiding the disastrous seven ten, which is almost never made, on television, mm. misses the 10 and changes the match. Well, yeah, now Tommy Jones can get up and strike out ninth and 10th and shut out Maldonado. Shocking. Not good. It's like a NBA player trying to lay up. I mean, it's almost automatic. Wow. Wow. Jones on the bench now. In the ninth, yes, that's what you do. The Hall of Famer takes advantage. Yeah, that was a good one. This was a beauty right here on that tough right lane. Now Tommy Jones can shut out Maldonado. He goes strike nine spare. We have the possibility of a tie. He said it was yesterday. The game is faster. The game is younger. He's had to adapt. Not being close-minded. He's changed his game. Let's see if those changes pay off in a big moment here. Seven pin. Are you stands? Are you kidding me? This is a, 
about as unlucky as Maldonado's shot on that lane was lucky in tripping that seven. For some reason, there's a problem with that seven pin. It's being very stubborn. Corner pins. Oh. Tommy, more tape. You don't more see it, you don't see that very often. And when when you when a player keeps putting tape and taking tape out, that means that that thumb is swelling and shrinking, and that is a, a real tough thing to, to handle because it affects feel. I think he was just taping up his spare ball though. All right. Nope, missed it. Oh, my gosh. And, again, that's that's that feel thing when Tommy having to go through all that tape, and then he had to do it to a spare ball. <sighs> Single pin spares missed by the tour's best players. It's unbelievable, Randy. I don't think I've seen in a major show two single pin conversions missed like this, this late. Oh. <laughs> yeah, Maldonado feels for him. And now he's up 11 pins. Just needs a mark. And it's over. Oh, oh. That's good. Oh. Oh, no. Hang on a minute. He needs nine for a tie. Two, four, ten. Look, Hold on a moment. He has to cover it to win. He needs nine to tie. Cover it for the victory. Doesn't do it. Gets nine. It's a tie. 216, 216. In match one. How about some bonus bowling? Oh, man. Here are the rules. I see choosing the lane and the order. One song, one lane, our pinfall wins. Tied. We're going to move on and repeat until we have a winner. The bowl in. Tommy Jones is going to start the roll off on the right lane. On the right lane? Hmm. Interesting. I don't Do you know like that it, or not? Well, I, I'm not sure what, what the basis is. And it might just be because of what Maldonado just did on that lane. Tommy has struck, he did strike in the ninth frame on that lane, struck in the seventh. And the third. All right, here we go. Roll off underway here. Well, it starts with Tournament of Champions. That's way off. Wow, just gets seven. Way light. We've seen that before. Two, four, ten from Maldonado. This is, this is, this is... <laughs> Start talking to yourself at this point. All right, eight to advance. Oh, boy. I got... Climbs the ladder. No, I move right, and I have to move right, and it still didn't hook. Go for the four. By one pin. The three seed, Sean Rash, is next. Dom Barrett of Great Britain, number two, and the top seed, our 2020 champion, the Tournament of Champions, Chris Prater.